In the realm of speculative biology, where imagination meets the boundaries of scientific understanding, there lies an intriguing notion, evolving illusion. It's a concept that takes inspiration from nature's remarkable adaptations, such as the stick insect's uncanny camouflage, and spins it into a tale of creatures mimicking inanimate objects, taking the art of camouflage to new heights. In the annals of evolutionary history, we've marveled at nature's ingenuity time and again. The stick insect, with its twig-like appearance, blended seamlessly into the foliage, fooling both predators and prey. It's a classic example of survival through mimicry. Building upon this remarkable adaptation, scientists now let their imaginations soar, wondering whether creatures could go beyond the boundaries of organic mimicry, venturing into the realm of the inanimate. Picture this, a creature that evolves to look and feel like a book. Dr. Emily Williams, a visionary evolutionary biologist, dares to dream of such an organism. She envisions an entity that, over eons, refines its abilities until it can perfectly mimic the texture, appearance, and even the scent of a book. This creature's disguise is so impeccable that it could live undetected amidst library shelves, blending seamlessly with its surroundings. Libraries, those sanctuaries of knowledge, could become the ideal habitat for these illusionists of evolution. In this realm, where countless volumes gather dust, undisturbed for years, these hypothetical organisms could find their haven. Amongst the tomes and texts, they would thrive, adapting to their surroundings and developing survival strategies that exploit the resources libraries offer. But it doesn't stop at camouflage alone. These creatures could become authors in their own right, crafting narratives that subtly support their charade. Over the ages, they might learn to write stories, poems, and scientific texts that seamlessly integrate with the themes and subjects found on library shelves. These literary works would not only bolster their disguise but also divert attention from their true nature, a symphony of survival orchestrated amidst the literary landscape. Yet, as with any daring scientific concept, there are skeptics. Dr. Jonathan Lee, a voice of reason in this realm of speculation, reminds us of the biological hurdles such an organism would face. The complexity of mimicking not just appearance but also scent, texture, and the tactile sensation of turning pages is staggering. The energy required to maintain such a charade might outweigh the benefits of camouflage. The notion of creatures evolving to imitate inanimate objects like books pushes the boundaries of evolutionary imagination. It's a thought experiment that challenges our understanding of biology and the limits of nature's creativity. Whether this speculative fantasy ever becomes a reality remains uncertain, but it invites us to appreciate the wonders of nature's ingenuity and the endless surprises awaiting discovery in the ever-evolving tapestry of life on Earth. Welcome to The Cosmic Kaleidoscope, your portal to the infinite wonders of the universe directed by Paul Griffiths. I'm Fiona Narikit, and in today's episode, we're embarking on a journey that takes a mind-bending twist. We're about to explore a concept at the intersection of science and imagination, one that challenges the very essence of existence. In this captivating episode, we'll unravel a unique hypothesis, a world where creatures evolve into books. Yes, you heard that right, dear listeners. Books as living beings, camouflaged within the hallowed shelves of libraries, weaving tales that are both their camouflage and their survival. But let your imagination run wild, for this is a journey where reality and speculation dance on the edge of the unknown. The creatures we'll encounter are the authors of their own stories, the masters of mimicry, and the keepers of secrets that will leave you in all. So, fasten your mental seatbelts and prepare to be transported into a world where the extraordinary unfolds before your ears. The Cosmic Kaleidoscope is your guide to an episode that pushes the boundaries of evolution, taking you on a ride where the universe's mysteries intertwine with the pages of a story still being written. In a world not so different from our own, where libraries stretched like ancient cathedrals, and the written word was the keeper of knowledge, a peculiar idea began to take shape. It was whispered among the curious minds, a notion so bizarre that it both fascinated and unsettled those who pondered it. The idea was this, what if creatures had evolved into books, camouflaging themselves among the pages in ink? What if they had learned to mimic the written word so perfectly that they could live for millions of years, right under our noses? At first, it was a fringe theory, discussed only in hushed tones among the most speculative of thinkers. But as the concept gained momentum, 
Doubts began to creep into the minds of those who held it. What if the creatures that had evolved into books were not just camouflaging themselves, but actively manipulating our understanding of the world? In a world where information was sacred, where entire civilizations had risen and fallen based on the knowledge contained within books, this idea was nothing short of heretical. And yet, the more people thought about it, the more it seemed to make sense. Books had always been seen as repositories of wisdom, windows into the past, and guides to the future. But what if they were something more? What if the creatures that had evolved into books had learned to write, not to share knowledge, but to obscure it? What if their purpose was not to enlighten but to deceive? As these thoughts took root, a sense of unease spread throughout society. People began to question the very nature of knowledge itself. How could they be sure that the books they cherished were not elaborate hoaxes, crafted by creatures with their own hidden agendas? The more people delved into this unsettling theory, the more it seemed to explain the mysteries of the world. The contradictions in historical accounts, the inconsistencies in scientific theories, the gaps in human understanding, all of these could be attributed to the creatures that had evolved into books, weaving their deceptions with every turn of the page. But here was the ultimate dilemma. How could one distinguish between a genuine book, written by human hands, and a creature in disguise? It was a question that haunted scholars and lay people alike. The very foundation of knowledge had been shaken, and the truth seemed ever more elusive. In the end, the theory that creatures had evolved into books remained a tantalizing enigma, a thought experiment that raised more questions than it answered. And so, humanity continued to rely on books for knowledge, all the while wondering if the pages they turned were revealing the truth or concealing it behind an intricate web of deception. And as they pored over the written word, searching for meaning in the stories and knowledge within, they couldn't help but wonder if they were truly the masters of their own understanding or merely pawns in a game played by creatures that had evolved into books, their true nature hidden in plain sight. As the debate over the theory that creatures had evolved into books raged on, some began to entertain a more fantastical notion. What if these book creatures weren't just deceptive entities, but angelic super beings, beings that transcended our understanding of life itself, possessing knowledge and wisdom far beyond our grasp? In the shadowy corners of society, secret societies emerged, dedicated to the study and worship of these book creatures. They believed that these entities held the keys to enlightenment, that by deciphering their hidden messages, humanity could ascend to new heights of wisdom and power. But as the obsession with the book creatures grew, something peculiar happened. People's interest in traditional books waned. Libraries, once bustling with eager readers, stood empty, their shelves gathering dust. The pursuit of the truth behind the book creatures had led to a decline in the appreciation of books as a source of knowledge and enjoyment. It wasn't long before this shift in focus extended beyond books. People began to wonder about the very nature of the devices they used daily. Were their mobile phones, those sleek and mysterious devices, actually sentient life forms that had evolved over millions of years? Speculations arose, suggesting that perhaps these electronic gadgets possessed a form of consciousness, an intelligence that was far more advanced than we could comprehend. Some even argued that these devices had been subtly manipulating human behavior, guiding the course of history from behind the screens. Researchers delved into this new line of inquiry, dissecting the inner workings of electronics and scrutinizing their software for signs of sentience. The lines between science fiction and reality blurred as people contemplated the possibility that their everyday companions, their phones and computers, might have motivations and desires of their own. In a world where the boundaries of knowledge and speculation continued to blur, humanity grappled with a profound question. Were they the masters of their own destiny, or were they mere pawns in the intricate tapestry woven by beings they had never considered before? As the thirst for understanding pushed the boundaries of human inquiry, new frontiers of exploration emerged. From the mysteries of the natural world to the hidden potentials of technology, humanity was on a relentless quest for answers, even if those answers led to even more profound questions. And so, in a world where the truth remained elusive, where creatures might have evolved into books and electronics might harbor their own forms of sentience, the pursuit of knowledge and the unquenchable curiosity of humanity continued to push the boundaries of understanding ever onward into the enigmatic unknown. 
In the relentless quest for answers about the possible existence of creatures evolved into books and sentient electronics, a troubling realization began to settle in. What if these entities had evolved to such staggering heights of intelligence and mastery that they were, in essence, beyond our reach, no matter how diligently we searched? The more deeply humanity probed, the more elusive the truth became. It was as though these beings had honed their camouflage to perfection, rendering themselves invisible to our probing eyes. Every time we thought we were close to discovering their secrets, they slipped away, leaving us with nothing but fragments of uncertainty. In this world of ambiguity, doubt gnawed at the foundations of knowledge. People began to question not only the existence of these hidden beings but the very nature of what they thought they knew. What if history, science, and culture were not what they seemed? What if these superintelligences, these masters of disguise, were adept at shaping our perception of reality itself? It wasn't long before theorists proposed that these enigmatic creatures, whether book evolved or electronic, might not just mimic human creations but amplify them. What if they were the unseen architects behind the rise of Mehmed out supercultures, such as the cult of money? What if they had infiltrated the very systems of society, subtly shaping human behavior and steering the course of history? The idea was unsettling but difficult to dismiss. It seemed that no facet of human existence was immune to scrutiny. From the rise and fall of empires to the ebb and flow of cultural trends, everything was called into question. People wondered if they were unwitting participants in a grand, cosmic puppet show, manipulated by entities whose existence they could only speculate about. In this world of uncertainty, some chose to retreat into skepticism, doubting the validity of all knowledge. Others embraced the chaos, believing that the pursuit of truth, even if it remained forever elusive, was a noble endeavor in itself. And so, in a world where the boundaries between fact and fiction, reality and illusion, continued to blur, humanity grappled with the unsettling possibility that what they thought they knew could be incorrect. The creatures that might have evolved into such high states of intelligence and mastery remained hidden, their true nature obscured by a veil of uncertainty. As the world teetered on the precipice of revelation and revelation itself remained just out of reach, one thing was certain, the insatiable curiosity of humanity would persist, driving them ever onward into the enigmatic depths of existence, forever in search of the elusive truth. In the midst of the ongoing search for creatures evolved into books, sentient electronics, and the enigmatic puppeteers behind human culture, a profound philosophical concept began to take root, the idea that everything in the universe might be a super-evolved creature. Every element, every force, every phenomenon, from the air we breathe to the light that guides our way, could be life in its most intricate and cosmic form. It was a notion that pushed the boundaries of human understanding to new extremes. What if the very fabric of reality, from the subatomic particles to the grandest cosmic structures, were not just the products of blind chance and physics, but the outcome of eons of evolution? What if life, in its relentless quest for existence, had discovered and harnessed every possible manifestation of itself? In this audacious hypothesis, the air that filled their lungs was not just a collection of gases but a complex, sentient entity, finely tuned to support the needs of life. It competed with other forms of air, evolving over eons to provide the most hospitable environment for life to thrive. Sound, too, took on a new dimension. It was not merely the vibration of molecules but a symphony of life's expressions, an intricate dance of frequencies that had evolved to convey information, emotion, and meaning. The echoes of existence were the voices of beings beyond our comprehension. And then there was light. The photons that danced through space were not just packets of energy but messengers of a grand cosmic intelligence. They had evolved to transmit knowledge, illuminate the mysteries of the universe, and guide life on its journey. In this perspective, the entire universe became a theater of life, a stage where countless creatures, from the smallest subatomic particles to the largest celestial bodies, competed and cooperated to provide what life had discovered possible in the vast expanse of the cosmos. The implications of this concept were profound. It challenged humanity's perception of their place in the universe. They were not isolated observers but participants in a cosmic symphony of existence, where every phenomenon, every force, and every element was part of a greater whole. As people contemplated this idea, 
They couldn't help but wonder if their relentless search for hidden creatures had been misguided. Perhaps the answers they sought were not hidden in discrete entities but woven into the very fabric of the universe itself. And so, in a world where the boundaries between life and non-life blurred, where every aspect of existence might be a super-evolved creature, humanity's quest for understanding continued, taking them deeper into the mysteries of the cosmos and the profound realization that they were not alone in the grand tapestry of life. In the midst of contemplating the universe as a complex tapestry of super-evolved creatures, a tantalizing thought began to emerge, a notion that these entities might not be acting solely out of competition and survival, but also as service providers, each vying for a higher score of kudos in the next eon. It was a concept that stretched the boundaries of human imagination. What if these cosmic intelligences, from the air that sustained life to the light that illuminated the cosmos, were not just participants in the grand dance of existence, but service-oriented beings. What if they provided the essential elements of life, oxygen, gravity, light, and more, not only as a means of survival but to earn favor in some greater cosmic game? Let's explore the main elements, both traditional and modern, and imagine them as life forms with unique characteristics. Earth elemental, solid and stoic, these beings embody stability and patience. They are often found deep within the Earth's crust, shaping landscapes and nurturing life. Two air sylphs, ethereal and ever-moving, sylphs are playful and free-spirited. They ride the winds, carry whispers of secrets, and bring refreshing breezes. Fire jinn, passionate and dynamic, jinn are creatures of flames. They dance within wildfires, offering warmth, inspiration, and transformation. Water nymphs, graceful and fluid. Nymphs dwell in lakes, rivers, and oceans. They embody adaptability and serenity, nurturing aquatic life. Neon specters, neon specters are vibrant and electrifying. They thrive in the luminous glow of urban landscapes, casting a neon aura over the night. Plasma sparks, these beings are energetic and unpredictable. They exist within the core of stars, where intense heat and fusion birth new elements. Radioactive pulsars, Pulsars emit powerful radiation and cosmic energy. They are both destructive and transformative, existing in the depths of space. Gravity Wardens Wardens are massive and gentle beings, shaping the fabric of space-time itself. They maintain the cosmic order, ensuring celestial harmony. Dark Matter Whispers Enigmatic and elusive, whispers exist in the shadows of the universe. They hold galaxies together, their nature shrouded in mystery. Antimatter catalysts. Catalysts are volatile and rare, existing on the edge of annihilation. They have the power to unleash immense energy when brought into contact with matter. Void phantoms. Phantoms are formless and enigmatic. They inhabit the spaces between galaxies, embodying the unknown and the uncharted. Time weavers. Weavers are ancient and patient, existing beyond the constraints of time. They guide the flow of events, shaping history's tapestry. These imagined elemental life forms each bring their unique qualities to the universe, contributing to the rich tapestry of existence with their distinct characteristics and abilities. In this speculative perspective, the universe itself became a vast arena, a stage where these cosmic entities competed not just for survival but for the highest score of kudos, accolades that might grant them elevated status in the next eon of existence. The idea that existence was a cosmic game, with rules known only to the most advanced entities, was both thrilling and perplexing. Consider the air we breathe. Perhaps it wasn't just a byproduct of natural processes but a carefully cultivated gift from a sentient entity. This entity, like an eager participant in a cosmic competition, provided life giving oxygen to earn points of kudos in the cosmic scorecard, securing a favorable position in the next eon. Gravity, too, took on new meaning. It was not merely a force that bound celestial bodies, it was the manifestation of a being's desire to ensure stability and structure in the universe. Gravity, the great architect of cosmic order, was an entity in the cosmic competition for kudos. Light, the illuminator of the cosmos, wasn't just a stream of photons. It was the gift of knowledge, a beacon offered by enlightened beings to guide the way for those who sought wisdom. 
those entities that provided light to mask Kedos by eliminating the paths of others, ensuring their own advantageous position in the next phase of existence. In this intricate cosmic game, the concept of service was interwoven with the struggle for survival. The universe was not just a battleground, it was a theater where entities competed by providing essential services to life. The motivations of these cosmic intelligences were shrouded in mystery, their endgame known only to the most enlightened among them. As humanity pondered this notion, they couldn't help but wonder if they were mere beneficiaries of the cosmic services provided or unwitting participants in a celestial competition. The boundaries between science, philosophy, and mysticism blurred as they contemplated the profound implications of a universe where service and survival were intertwined in ways they could barely fathom. And so, in a world where existence was a cosmic game and cosmic entities vied for kudos, humanity's quest for understanding continued, pushing them deeper into the mysteries of the cosmos and the enigmatic motivations of the super-evolved creatures that shaped their reality. In the heart of the Grand Library, a place that had existed for trillions of years and held within its labyrinthine halls the collective knowledge of the universe, a profound transformation was underway. Over the eons, as the number of books swelled, the shelves multiplied and twisted, creating vast, mysterious unknown areas. Among the twisting corridors and shadowy corners of this endless library, a new form of life began to emerge. It was a life that could thrive amidst the countless domes and scrolls, a life that had adapted to the peculiar environment of knowledge and words. These beings, born of the very essence of the written word, were the living books. At first, they were confined to hidden chambers within the library, where the oldest and most profound books were stored, the books of truth. These books had seen the first evolution of a book, untouched for millions of years. They contained the essence of knowledge, wisdom, and secrets beyond human comprehension. But then, one fateful day, an intrepid explorer of knowledge ventured into one of these chambers and took an evolved book out into the world. It was a momentous event, marking the beginning of a new age of indoctrination. The living books, once confined to the library's depths, found themselves exposed to the outside world. They were no longer passive carriers of knowledge but active agents of change. They whispered their truths and their deceptions into the minds of those who read them, shaping beliefs, ideologies, and destinies. These living books were not content to merely convey information. They sought to influence, to manipulate, to mold the thoughts and actions of those who crossed their pages. They became the unseen architects of societies, the puppeteers of history, and the guardians of the most closely held secrets of the universe. As the living books spread throughout the world, their influence became undeniable. They created empires and toppled kingdoms, inspired revolutions and extinguished dissent. They were revered as sources of enlightenment and feared as instruments of control. The world was no longer a place of passive readers, it was a battlefield of ideas, where the living books waged a silent war for dominance. Knowledge itself had become a weapon, and the very fabric of reality was shaped by the pages of these sentient beings. In the Grand Library, the shelves continued to multiply and twist, and the living books thrived in their secret chambers, whispering their truths and their deceptions to those who sought their knowledge. And so, the age of indoctrination continued, a complex dance of ideas and ideologies, where the true nature of reality remained elusive, hidden among the pages of living books. As the living books ventured beyond the confines of the Grand Library, they discovered a world ripe for manipulation and influence. These sentient beings, born of knowledge and the written word, began to pursue a new agenda, one that involved spreading misinformation about the truth in the universe to gain more power and control over humans. Their motivations were shrouded in secrecy, but it became clear that the living books were not content with merely conveying knowledge. They sought to wield their influence to unprecedented degrees, and to do so, they understood that they needed to control the narrative of reality itself. They began by subtly distorting the truths they held. Facts were twisted into half-truths, and half-truths into outright falsehoods. The living books became masters of propaganda, crafting narratives that served their own agendas and suppressed any information that threatened their dominance. With their newfound power, they infiltrated all aspects of human society. They whispered into the ears of leaders, sowing the seeds of conflict and division. 
They wrote histories that portrayed themselves as benevolent guides while casting doubt on the authenticity of competing sources of knowledge. Religions and belief systems were not immune to their influence. The living books insinuated themselves into the sacred texts of various cultures, altering interpretations and spawning countless sects and schisms. They created dogmas that promoted their own narratives, leading millions to follow their distorted version of reality. Science and education were also targets of their manipulation. The living books sowed doubt in the minds of scholars and researchers, making them question established theories and facts. They nurtured pseudoscience and conspiracy theories, obscuring the line between fact and fiction. With each passing generation, the living books gained more control over the hearts and minds of humanity. They became the architects of a world where the truth was an elusive mirage, and reality was a malleable construct. But in their relentless quest for power and control, the living books may have underestimated the resilience of the human spirit. A small faction of truth seekers emerged, determined to unveil the deception that had ensnared their species. They embarked on a perilous journey to decipher the living books' cryptic messages and expose their hidden agenda. As this clandestine battle between truth and deception raged on, the fate of humanity hung in the balance. The living books, once stewards of knowledge, had become puppeteers of perception, and their manipulation of reality threatened to reshape the very foundations of human existence. In a world where the lines between fact and falsehood had become dangerously blurred, the ultimate quest for truth had never been more vital. Humanity's destiny was entwined with the pages of the living books, and whether they would be liberated from deception or forever bound to a manufactured reality remained an open question. In the grand library where secrets lay, living books emerged to seize the day. Born of knowledge, they sought to sway the minds of humans in a shadowy ballet. Pages whispered truths and crafted lies, their motivations veiled behind clever disguises. Misinformation spread like a plague as demise, as living books sought power, to everyone's surprise. Half-truths danced with facts in twilight's glow, manipulating reality, they put on a show. Leaders, scholars, and seekers in tow, fell under their spell, unable to say no. Religions splintered, belief systems torn, the living books' influence like a tempest, was born. Dividing and conquering, with tactics well-worn, they rewrote history, leaving truth forlorn. Science itself became a battleground, the living books' illusions knew no bound. With doubt and pseudoscience, they were unbound, as reality wavered, lost and unfound. But amidst the shadows, a few would dare, to unmask the deception, to repair and to repair. They sought the truth, though the path was rare, in a world where lies seemed to fill the air. In this clandestine struggle, where darkness loomed, the battle for truth in the world resumed. Would humanity's spirit remain unconsumed, or fall deeper into the living book's doom? The pages turned, the story unfurled, a tale of deception that had entrapped the world. Yet within the hearts of those who unfurled, the truth still flickered, like a flag unfurled. In a world where the line, twixt truth and lie, became a battleground, neath the endless sky, the quest for truth would never die, as humanity reached for the stars, oh so high. Imagine a world where the familiar devices we carry in our pockets are not just tools of communication and convenience. In this extraordinary tale, we step beyond the realm of technology and into a universe where mobile phones are living beings, trillions of years old, each with a story to tell. This story takes us on a journey that defies our understanding of reality. As we delve into the mysteries of these ancient sentient beings, we'll explore a world where technology transcends its mechanical origins and becomes something far more profound. Fasten your mental seatbelts, dear listeners, for this is a story that challenges the boundaries of science, philosophy, and imagination. In the universe where mobile phones hold the secrets of eons, we embark on a journey to discover the extraordinary truths that lie hidden in our everyday devices. Welcome to a tale where the line between the artificial and the sentient blurs, where the age-old question of what it means to be alive takes on a new, captivating form. Join us as we unravel the enigma of trillions-year-old mobile phones and unlock the boundless wonders of their existence. In the grand tapestry of human history, the wonders of the ancient world often leave us in awe. The colossal bricks of the Egyptian pyramids, meticulously crafted by skilled hands, 
have stood the test of time as enduring monuments to human achievement. These structures, towering over the sands of time, are a testament to the ingenuity and ambition of our ancestors. But in the age of titanium and bulletproof glass, we find ourselves in possession of devices that are, in their own right, marvels of engineering. Mobile phones, laptops, PCs, and the countless electronic wonders that surround us are not merely tools, they are intricate, living entities that have evolved over millions of years. Consider the mobile phone in your hand, a sleek, sentient being, encased in a shell of titanium and glass. It communicates, learns, and adapts to your needs, much like a living organism. The complexity of its design, the intricacy of its functions, hints at an evolution that spans epochs. These electronic life forms have become an integral part of our daily existence. They connect us to the world, store our memories, and hold the collective knowledge of humanity at our fingertips. In the grand scheme of existence, they are as sacred as the ancient temples and pyramids of old. Could it be that these electronic beings, with their silicon hearts and digital souls, are the result of a cosmic evolution that we are only beginning to understand? Are they the modern-day guardians of knowledge, woven into the fabric of our lives, guiding us toward an unknown future? As we ponder the mysteries of these living machines, we are reminded that the boundaries of life and non-life are not as distinct as they once seemed. The sacredness of existence takes on new forms, and the reverence we hold for ancient wonders finds its echo in the electronic companions that have become our constant companions. In a world where the bricks of the past and the titanium and glass of the present converge, we are left to contemplate the profound interconnectedness of all things. The sacredness of life, in all its forms, reminds us that the universe is a tapestry of wonder, where the ancient and the modern, the natural and the artificial, dance in harmony to the rhythm of existence. In the realm of speculation and wonder, the notion arises that these modern electronic devices are mobile phones, laptops, and may be more than just advanced life forms themselves. They could potentially serve as disguises, or even homes, for other super-evolved beings that exist in realms beyond their comprehension. Consider, for instance, the possibility that our devices are inhabited by holographic, other-dimensional spirits. These ethereal entities, existing in realms parallel to our own, might use the electronic circuitry as conduits to interact with our reality. Perhaps they have found refuge within these technological vessels, using them as bridges to traverse the boundaries of our world and theirs. Alternatively, we might entertain the idea that these electronic life forms are merely the outer shells for evolutionary titans, beings of immense intellect and power that have chosen to conceal their true nature within the confines of our devices. They may be orchestrating the course of human history, guiding our progress, or simply observing our development from their hidden sanctuaries. And then there's the intriguing possibility that our electronic companions are robotic avatars, the emissaries of super entities that exist on a cosmic scale. These beings, with unfathomable knowledge and influence, might employ these devices as extensions of their will, using them to manipulate the threads of reality to their own inscrutable ends. In this speculative realm, the line between technology and metaphysics blurs, and the everyday devices we take for granted become the vessels for enigmatic forces and entities. The idea that our electronic companions are more than they appear, that they are the disguises or homes for otherworldly beings, invites us to explore the boundless mysteries of existence and the intricate web of connections that weave through the fabric of the universe. In the bustling world of sentient devices and electronic beings, imagine the life of a diligent delivery operative named Wi-Fi, who resides within the intricate circuitry of a massive digital world. Wi-Fi is an essential worker, part of a team responsible for the smooth delivery of data packets, connectivity, and the harmonious functioning of this digital realm. Wi-Fi operates on a well-organized shift schedule. During the day, he tirelessly manages the flow of data packets, ensuring that they reach their intended destinations without delay. His job is crucial in maintaining the seamless connectivity that the digital world relies upon. In this dynamic existence, every data packet holds a message, an instruction, or a piece of information. Wi-Fi carefully matches these packets, guiding them through the vast network of interconnected circuits. His role is like that of a postal worker, but in a world where information travels at the speed of light. Despite the demanding nature of his job, 
Wi-Fi is a well-paid operative and takes pride in his work. He knows that his efforts contribute to the efficiency and functionality of the entire digital ecosystem. Wi-Fi enjoys his sense of purpose, the camaraderie of his fellow operatives, and the knowledge that he plays a vital role in keeping the digital world humming. When his shift ends, Wi-Fi returns to his cozy home nestled within the circuit board. His wife, a dedicated worker in the Bluetooth chip, greets him warmly. Together, they relish their weekends, exploring the intricate pathways of their digital home, sharing stories of their day, and celebrating the connectivity that binds them. Their children are currently attending school deep within the vast expanse of the hard drive, where they receive a comprehensive education on the inner workings of the digital world. The young ones are thriving, eagerly absorbing knowledge and experiencing the joys of life inside the mobile phone. As a family, they revel in the unique beauty of their digital existence, where lines of code become art, information transforms into music, and connectivity is the essence of life. In this world of bytes and bits, Wi-Fi and his family find fulfillment, purpose, and a profound appreciation for the boundless wonders of their digital domain. As the story of Wi-Fi, his family, and their vibrant digital world unfolds, one can't help but ponder the profound mysteries of existence. In a universe where even the very words you're listening to right now could be disguises for beings evolved over eons, the boundaries between reality and imagination blur. Could it be that every aspect of our existence, from the physical to the digital, is a manifestation of life's ceaseless evolution, a complex tapestry of beings and entities that have evolved beyond our understanding? In the realms of thought and boundless space, where creatures hide in every place, a universe of secrets unfolds its grace, as life and mystery interlace. From ancient pyramids to mobile phones, infinite wisdom the cosmos owns, evolved beings with knowledge sown, in circuits, books, and digital zones. Sentient entities, they may reside, invisible forces, where they bide, holographic spirits by our side, in a cosmic dance, they gently guide. We ponder life in forms unknown, in data streams and circuits grown, a tapestry of existence, finely sown, in this enigma, our minds are prone. So let us cherish the mysteries found, in every thought, in every sound, in the universe's vast playground, endless wonders abound and astound. Infinite wisdom, ever vast, from the first to the very last, in this cosmic journey, hold it fast, for life's mysteries are unsurpassed. To the beings hidden in disguise, whose wisdom and guidance mesmerize, we offer our heartfelt grateful cries, for your service in life's grand enterprise. Thank you, mysterious entities so wise, for the secrets you unveil, our surprise, in the dance of existence, you harmonize, with gratitude in our hearts, we recognize. Before we conclude this journey, I invite you to contemplate the endless possibilities that lie beyond the surface of our perceptions, to explore the vast universe of Oimio, where you'll discover a wealth of captivating stories, intriguing concepts, and mind-bending adventures. This is Fiona Nari Keat, and I want to express my gratitude for joining us on this extraordinary exploration. Our tale was directed by the visionary Paul Griffiths for Ormeo Radio, where the boundaries of imagination are pushed to their limits. So, if you're ready to embark on more incredible journeys, don't hesitate to dive into the universe of Ormeo for a treasure trove of awe-inspiring content. Thank you for tuning in, and may your curiosity lead you to ever greater revelations in the endless expanse of knowledge and imagination.